Welcome back to another DAX for Power BI tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic ranking measure using the rank X function. This is a really useful function um, that will help you rank your data when you have specific slicers, uh, slicer selections chosen on your report. Uh, so just to give you a little background on how it works, uh, this is a project that I put together. It's basically a movie recommender that uses an R script in the background to recommend movies to users based on what they like. Um, so I have this this report right here. It's got a random name here. It says, hello, Austin Wells. He's user number 160. I don't have a specific genre of movie selected. And these are the top 50 movie rec recommendations for this user 160. And basically it has 50 predictions. And this ranking is this column that I'm going to be explaining to you today. Uh, you can see that when I change, let's say my genre to the horror movies, Although um, I only have three recommendations in the top 50 that fall in the horror category, this ranking dynamically switches to show you a ranking of one, two, and three. So although the hard-coded prediction that the recommend, uh, recommendation system spits out is 8, 39, and 47, it takes those three numbers and then shows one, two, and three as the ranking. Another example is if we click on drama, there are more movies here and you have a much wider array of predictions, but it still lists the rankings in one, two, three, four format. So that's really cool. So basically just condenses it down to where there are no gaps between these predictions. And I'm gonna show you how we are gonna do that right now. So basically all we need to do, let's get rid of this ranking column so we can build it from scratch to make sure it's working. Uh, we'll come to our measure table and we'll create a new measure. We'll call this ranking new. Um, and first, I'll show you how most people, when they find the rank X function, what they do first and how it does not work, unfortunately. It doesn't always work the way you think it might. So let's go ahead and type in rank X. Rank X takes a table and an expression. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to want to throw in the table that this data is coming from. In my case, this would be the recommendations table. And the expression, most people would think, is when you see... Um, when you see this expression, most people think you want to rank on some sort of numerical data. In this case, it would most likely be the sum of prediction. Sum because we need uh, prediction to just be a singular value. We can't just throw in prediction. So if you throw in the recommendations table and basically order it based on the prediction value, you click enter, throw in rankings new, and you get something that looks like this. You get all ones and it doesn't make any sense. And there are a couple things wrong with our measure. The first thing is that it's taking just the recommendations table. We're going to actually have to pass in a special version of the recommendations table with the current filters in place. And the way we do that is we use the all selected function, which basically filters the recommendations table to take in all of the filters coming from the report, but it also gets rid of any filters inside the query because that isn't going to be necessary for our case. It doesn't really matter. But you can think of this all selected as since we're already selecting user ID 160 and drama, it's going to use those filters on the recommendation table. So if you click enter now, we can see that nothing's changed and there's still all ones. It's because there's one more piece of the puzzle that we're gonna wanna take care of here. Instead of sum here, it's kind of on the right track. We do want to basically order our ranking based on this prediction value, but it's not taking the new filters that we're passing through it's taking the entire, or it's taking row by row. It's going through the recommendations table by each row and ranking basically the movie prediction against itself, which it's always going to return one in that case. In order to pass our all selected table of recommendations, we have to pass in the calculate function. Calculate comes with its own filter context, which will allow us to be able to rank against the rest of the movies that fall in um, this filter. So if we click enter there, that's how we begin to see our new ranking. Oh, and I also see I'm ranking backwards. You can see that I'm starting with 22 and going down to one. Rank X takes a couple of extra filters or extra parameters. So if we just click comma, we're now on the value. Click comma again, we're on the order and we can just do ascending. That's what ASC stands for, D-E-S-C stands for descending. Let's go ahead and click enter. And now we have our ranking that falls in line with the order that we want. So just to review, 
we're using the rank x function. We're passing in the filtered recommendations table, taking the current filters coming from outside the report. In our case, it's the user ID 160 and the genre of drama. And then we're ranking based on the prediction value. We're using sum because we have to use an aggregate function to get this numerical data. And we have to use the calculate function as a wrapper in order to pass through the filter context of this all selected recommendations. We're also passing in the optional parameter of the order of the ranking, which will be ascending. And that's how we get something to look like this. So now we have that all done. Uh, one more example is if we go to maybe musical, we see that there are less movies and we still have our ranking in place. And as you can see, these movies over here on the right are constantly changing. Um, it's getting the first recommendation here, Beauty and the Beast. The second is Lion King, and the third is Aladdin. So I'll just give you a little quick example of how this is working. These are a couple more measures themselves. I have first, second, and third. So if we click on first, we see that first is just a calculate function that returns the first non-blank uh, non -blank value from the movies table, but it's given a filter to the movies table where ranking equals one. So it's taking that measure we just created with the ranking and seeing where it's one, and where it is one, it's returning the first non-blank of movies. First non-blank is basically just giving us a value here. Since there will only be one movie that has a ranking of one, it's basically just returning that movie. So for the second, uh, where ranking equals two, return the first non-blank of the movie title. And for third, same thing, but it's got a where ranking equals three, return the first non-blank of the movie title. So it's a very flexible function. Um, it's very, very, very useful, and I recommend that you give it a try. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next DAX for Power BI video.